Alright everybody, let's take a look at some probability. What we have is we have a survey that was conducted and asked people who had bought a new car whether or not their new automobile required a major repair within the first 12 months. They were also asked whether their car was a U.S. manufacturer or an import. Once we have this information from our survey, we're then able to use a Punnett square if you're a biology person, or a matrix, if you're a statistics person, in order to answer virtually any probability question you could imagine regarding these survey results. So we're going to look at the question and what we want to do is we want to pull out the probabilities from the question. So let's go through and see what we have. So the first thing they were asked is whether or not their new car required a major repair within the 12, first 12 months. So 23% of new car buyers said yes, their new car required a major repair. So down here, I have probability of major repair, 23%. And remember, the complement rule says the probability of A plus the probability of not A has to equal 1, so we take 1 minus the 23, and we know that no major repair is then 77%. The next thing they were asked is, is their car a domestic or an import? And in this survey, 41% said their car was U.S. based. So I'm coming back down here, and I know that yes, U.S. manufacturer 41%. 1 minus the 0.41 gives us 0.59. And so I now know the probability of U.S. yes and U.S. no. Then lastly, it says it was found that 11% of the respondents answered their car required a major repair and was manufactured by U.S. based company. So that looks like this down here. Major repair, yes. U.S., yes. And that gives us 11%. So while we're here, let's check real quickly just to see if these two events, a repair and a U.S. or non-U.S. manufacturer, is if they are independent events. So how do we know if these events are independent or not? The probability of A times the probability of B equals the probability of A and B, then we know that they are independent events. So what do we have here? Well, we have this idea that major repair, 0.23, times U.S. manufacturing, 0.41, if the two events are independent, they will equal this 11%. What we know now is the 0.23 times the 0.41 does not equal the probability of A and B, and so we have dependent events, and for dependent events, the easiest way to solve these is with a matrix or a Punnett square. So let's get started. All right, and so the way that I'm going to construct my Punnett square is I'm going to use these probabilities that we pulled out from the question, and I'm going to use it to label my box. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to put my two positive responses here on this corner, and then I have my other, which is my complement, which is no. So probability of major repair, 0.23, so that's this column, so that's my 0.23. Probability of no major repair, that 0.77, right, is this column. So now I'm going to look at the U.S. manufacturers. So I had 41% said yes, so that becomes this row, 
and no U.S. manufacturer becomes this row. Now I just have one more probability to use and this is the probability of the both which means this was yes a major repair, this was a U.S. manufacturer, so this 11% belongs in the box where our two yes responses, yes U.S. and yes repair, intersect. So now all I have to do is figure out what goes in those other three boxes. So we're going to now fill in the missing boxes and I know that this 11% plus this amount here has to equal 41. I know that this 11% plus this amount here has to equal 23. I know that this amount here plus this amount has to equal the 59. And I also know that all four of these boxes here have to equal 1. My 2 here have to equal 1. And these two here have to equal 1. So I simply have used subtraction to fill in the missing values. So 11 minus 41 gives me 30. The 59 um, minus the 12 that has to go here because remember 23 minus 11 gives me 12 here. So 12 plus some number is 59. That gives me my 47. So as long as I have one inside box I can just use subtraction in order to get to my filled in. What's the check for this? Right. Always make sure that all four inside boxes equal one and make sure that each side equals one. As soon as you verify that you can go ahead and begin to solve. So here is my completed matrix with all of my numbers and now I'm going to ask the first question. What's the probability that the respondent bought a U.S. manufactured car? So I'm dealing with these U.S. yes people but did not have a major repair. So I want the people who had no repair. And so that probability is at the intersection of that row and that column. So I now know that in the respondents, um, there 30% of them, or there's a 30% probability that somebody bought a U.S. car and it did not require a major repair within its first 12 months. So now let's look and see what's the probability they bought a non-U.S. car so that's this U.S. no and had a major repair so that's repair yes so again I'm going to go to where these two intersect I have U.S. no repair yes and now I know that 12% of them, I'm so bad at writing this thing, 12% of them had an imported car that required a repair within the first 12 months. Now we're going to use this box to answer the question, what's the probability a respondent bought a non-U.S. manufacturer car or had a repair? Well, remember our law of probability says that the probability of one or the other is the probability of one plus the other minus the boths because remember we can't double dip. So let's look first at the probability that it was not a US automobile. That's all of these people right here. 
Now we want to say what's the probability that they had a major repair, which is US yes. I'm going to change colors. And we're going to say repair yes are all of these people. So now what we have to look at is to see where are where do we intersect? In other words, where did we double dip? Right? And you can see right here, this 12% was counted and is part of this 23%. This 12% is also part of this 59%. So this 12% right here is my double dip and is what has to come out. So I can take the 23 plus the 59 percent minus the 12 or I could just say well let's only count the 12 percent once and say 11 percent plus 12 percent minus 47 percent plus 47 percent will give me the total number. Remember in that case I'm just taking the 11 plus the 12 plus the 47 and that's going to give me the probability as 70 percent. So look at something else here in terms of your complement rule. I want all of these and I want all of these and I want all of these but I don't want these. So couldn't I have said 1 minus the ones I don't want will give me what I do want? Absolutely. So there are three different ways that we could arrive at this 70 percent answer down here. Right? I could take 1 minus what I don't want which would be 1 minus 30 percent. I could simply add the ones I want, which are these three, which will give me the 70 percent. Or I could have added this one and this one and then subtracted this 12 percent, which is my double dip one time, which would have also given me 70 percent. And we're going to finish up with an easy one. What's the probability a respondent bought a US manufactured car? So that's my yeses here. And had a major repair. That's my repair here. And so I know the intersection of these two it's simply my 11 percent. So hopefully now what you can see is that regardless of what you're asked, once you have completed this Punnett square or probability matrix, you can literally solve for any probability that anybody could possibly want to know about our automobile consumer satisfaction survey. Thanks and I hope you enjoyed this. See you in the next